Larry, when you have a, a player like Jakob, maybe once in a lifetime, who knows, what kind of pressure do you feel as a coach and a staff to, to maximize his talent during the time you have him? Uh, you know, that's a that's an interesting question. I really don't think there's any more pressure to, than than any of the other guys. It's kind of the same thought and blueprint that you have when you recruit all these guys. And, and I was just on the phone last night with some recruits. And the one thing that you you feel 100% convinced about is that you, you don't know where they're going to end up. But you know that they're, they're, I'd like to promise them that I think they can reach their potential. You know, we'll squeeze as much out of them as we can and we'll address their weaknesses and, um, you know, have some big boy conversations with them and not always tell them everything that they want to hear. But, but uh, you know, not have any regrets when the process is over, whether that's partway through a college career or at the end of a fifth year senior, whatever the situation might be. So, um, yeah, it's a great question, but it, it really is is no different than anybody else. You wanna you wanna just maximize your your opportunities and and like we always talk about, you don't want to have any regrets. You know, you don't want to be sitting when you're an old man looking back at it, wishing you would have done something else or you would have done a little bit more, or pushed him a little harder. Or, uh, and I think Jakob's an example of a guy that's probably taken five or six things that we told him about this summer that he was going to have to improve on and has faced them head on and and done a pretty nice job you know uh whether it's shooting free throws or slowing down or putting weight on or staying out of foul trouble all of those things i mean he's a pretty cerebral player and um it's been a it's been a nice little learning curve that he's been on coach it's only one game but can you quantify what that means to come back to on the road hostile environment overtime the pac-12 leader and for uh your guys to really step up to the challenge uh you know, it is only one game, but can you look at this as maybe a defining part of, of your season? I mean, um, that, that, that may, you know, tell more to come? Well, you, you know, each of the 18 games kind of tells a different story, and and um, I don't think there's a whole whole lot to it. I've said, uh, I said after our Oregon game, and I, I've used the saying a lot with our team, and I think a lot of it comes from NBA experience because you've, you play so many games is that it's you know it's not necessarily about any one game it's it's a situation where you're never as good as you think you are probably it's more about grinding and staying in the moment we made mistakes in washington that we can address try not to make those mistakes again but it's you know the oregon game we felt pretty bad in the locker room uh but it wasn't time to to jump out of the ship and call it quits and I said we're not as bad as we think we are right now and the same sentiment was expressed Sunday night after we beat Washington it's it's more about a consistent effort mentally physically to come into a practice setting come into a film setting whatever it might be and try to keep getting better and better and, and our goal is to improve as the year goes along and to be playing our best basketball at the right time of year so um that's what I'm hopeful for. And then when you're done playing the 18 games or we're done in Vegas, you can look back on some things and then maybe you, you assess what that game did for you. But we don't know what this, that Washington game did for us because we haven't seen how we've responded to that, to that victory. So I know we bounced back from the Oregon loss, you know, and we've managed to win three games. Uh, so that's the more important thing, I think, is to, is to stay in the moment. Uh, not get too caught up in some of the highs and lows of it. You look at this matchup against Cal. Um, you know, obviously, last time you guys played him, you know, they made it difficult. Jakob had to take a lot of shots to get his points, and and uh, they they really could body up uh, on the in, on the inside. Um, do you kind of take a, away some things from the matchup? Like, are you looking at it now, saying, okay, here are some adjustments, here's some things, or or are those bodies just kind of something? You just have to deal with and hopefully execute better against. Well, I think it's a it's a little bit of both. I mean, uh, that's what round two in the conference season is all about. Is you you make some adjustments. We're we're looking at what what we did wrong. You know, uh, Cal's probably looking at the same film, trying to figure out what it is they need to make adjustments on. And um, we have a pretty good idea what it is they try to do defensively. They're leading the, the Pac-12 in defensive field goal percentage, so things don't come easy, whether it's Jakob inside or, you know, perimeter guys, whatever the case might be, they're they're committed to playing defense, and they do it in a real solid physical 
manner. I think they've got some big bodies, so they don't need to double team. Um, you know, they can throw three different guys at Jakob, which is a unique challenge for us as well. And um, we think they've got some chinks in their armor on both sides of the ball. They probably feel the same way about us. And, um, you know, that's what's, that's what's kind of fun about getting the chance to play round two. We've got to be a lot better. Um, that was a that was a different time of the year. You know, we came off that tough loss at Stanford, and I was really proud of our guys for bouncing back. We had a good practice, um, two days actually, mentally and physically, to get ready for Cal. And I saw us miss a lot of shots. I saw it be a four-point halftime game against the team that was playing pretty well. We made we made a number of mistakes and missed a bunch of open shots. And so I'm optimistic that we can that we can play better um, and control some of those things for for the second go round. And then also, can you just talk about what you do to combat the, or try to balance academics and the fact that these kids don't get a lot of time off and the, with the schedule and being in the hotel for four days, like you said, what do you guys do to, to counter that? Because I know you're big on academics. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a situation, you know, we just basically started school. We had our first three conference road games and we weren't in session yet. So that was a little bit helpful uh, in terms of academics a year ago was was quite a quandary when we were uh we finished the season on the road the washington schools we were gone for four nights we came home we were gone for four or five nights to vegas and then we were gone to portland and then we were gone to houston and um, we didn't exactly finish strong you know that's really hard in and around that spring break you've always got exams either pr right prior to the spring break or right after spring break as teachers always set them up and um you know, we took a lot of tutors, took tutoring and mentoring with us on the road, and we did the best that we could. But at the end of the day, to be away and have, um, you know, it's a pretty important time basketball-wise. Uh, it's hard to, to burn that candle at both ends. And um, at least, like I said, six, you know, six of our road games will be in session versus nine last year. So it'll be a little bit easier for us to probably get our get our feet grounded and and not get too far behind and um it's difficult it's hard for the student athletes there's a lot going on the, the demands that they have and um you know we just finished with the three point as a team this uh this last semester so that's that's pretty cool when you look across the board and you have a three point grade average as a group and and uh managed to win some games that's we're pretty proud of it